Good morning. Welcome to Thought for the Day. On Sunday nights, we're doing a study in the Lord's Prayer. And there's a quote from Matthew 6 in The Messenger. And it said, the world is full of so-called prayer warriors who are prayer ignorant. They're full of formulas and programs and advice, peddling techniques for getting what you want from God. Don't fall for that nonsense. And it reminded me of when I was in America some years ago and we, I was traveling back from Minneapolis. I'd been up there uh, doing loads of things. God, God's absolutely amazing what he did. I'll probably share that with you another day. Coming back from Minneapolis and the, the guy who was driving us back had to drop me at Wisconsin. That's where I was staying. And he decided he was very tired and he was starting to doze off at the wheel. So I said, look, can, can I do some of the driving? So I ended up driving for about three hours. And it was through the night. And in, again, sort of towards morning time. And we were on the outskirts. We, we're just coming up to where you should turn off to Wisconsin. And he said, uh, no, we've got to carry on down to... Um, Chicago because I've got to go on to another meeting so it's okay so at four o'clock in the morning he drops me off in Chicago and he said to us not a problem bus stations over there coach stations over there just pop in you'll be fine there's guards so it's really nice and warm in there and I said okay so I got my bags and went through this door and could see below me through a glass panel all the guards and everything was really nice down there. It was uh, a lovely bus station, nice and warm. And But I couldn't get in. All the doors were locked. And there was a note that they didn't open until six o'clock in the morning. So I thought, oh, great, here we go. So I sat down on my case outside this glass door looking down on, on all of this lovely stuff that was going on, nice and warm, and I was sitting sort of semi-outside. And I felt very lonely, very much on my own, and just very, not frightened, but just very concerned that I was there and I didn't know anybody and I couldn't get in touch with anybody. And so I sat down on my case and prayed a little bit. And saying, Lord, you know, just want a bit of help, like. And then suddenly, I felt very warm, and it's in the middle of, you know, it's in winter, so it's very cold there anyway. But I felt warm, like a glow, and I felt like there was a bubble that had appeared around me. And outside of this bubble, I could see, because I was getting a bit concerned at the time before this bubble arrived, that there were people there, obviously prostitutes, there were people shooting stuff up their arms and everything. And down below, I could see this protected area with guards, but I wasn't in it. And this bubble appeared, and it was lovely and warm in this bubble. And I just sat there, and I felt so comfortable and so content and happy and safe. And it was great. And I stayed there, and it didn't seem like 10 minutes, but the two hours passed. And the doors were opened and I went down into this uh, area and then had to find out how to get to Wisconsin, which is about 170 miles away now. So I rang up the number that I had for the people I was staying with and they were absolutely horrified that this guy had left me um, and, and abandoned me. And they told me what coach I could catch to get back. And I think the first coach out was about sort of eight o'clock uh, in the morning. Uh, so that was fine. So so got back on the coach. The following day, um, we were, so on the following Sunday, uh, I was at their church and I'd done a bit of sharing. And there'd been a lot of discussion about um, so that in the leadership about how I'd been abandoned and how terrible it was. And, and I was like, I felt a bit concerned for the poor bloke who'd done this because he always had reasons for, for being somewhere else. But anyway, so the meeting had happened. After the meeting, this young lady came over to us, a middle-aged lady, who was a bit 
slow. Let's put it nicely. People would pass her in church. They wouldn't spend a lot of time with her. And she was somebody that, you know, was sort of, you know, there. And, and um, because we're Christians, we'll put up with the theirs of this life. And she come up to me, and I'm not going to use the accent, but she come up to me and she says, Brother Derek, can I ask you something? I says, yeah. She says, on Friday morning, uh, early hours of Friday morning, I said, she said, about four o'clock, were you in trouble? And I said, well, yes. She says, okay. She says, and, and you were okay by six, weren't you? I said, yeah. I said, that's true. I says, why? She says, well, she says, I, I just puzzled and I thought I'd ask you. She says, because at four o'clock, I got kicked out of bed by God. And God said, pray for Brother Derek. And so I got out of my bed and I prayed. She says, and I prayed and prayed and prayed. She says, and at six o'clock, God turned around and said, you can stop praying for Brother Derek now. So I stopped and I went back to bed. And she said, next time I see him, I think I'll ask him. Uh, what uh, what all that was about and she gave me something which I've kept for for a long time now here he is and it reminds me of God's promise to us that he'll never leave us nor forsake us that he loves us and it's like in the bible it says never put away the old marker stones because when you know that you know that you know that God has done something in your life. That's a marker. That's a place that you know God was there. And when you move away from that, when you go on in life and things aren't exactly what you think they should be, you can always look back at those markers. And this little friend here has been a reminder. He sits in my office, just above the desk. I see him every morning. And he just reminds me of God's faithfulness and God's love. And that scripture just reminded me that there's a lot of people who have fancy words and they tell you lots of things. But God's interested not in the fancy words and the people that are going to tell you lots of things. What he's interested in is the heart. And when he taps your bed in the morning or when he taps you in the first thing in the morning or very late at night or whatever it may be and say, will you pray? I reckon he may have asked a number of people, but that lady got up and she prayed and she prayed and she prayed. She didn't know what it was about. She didn't know what for. She didn't know what was going on. All she knew was she had to pray. And she prayed until God said to her, you don't need to pray for anymore. So be like that lady, you know. And when God gives you that little nudge, then just be there to answer the call. because. The blessing you get from it will be absolutely fantastic. And here's my little friend who will be a reminder forever of what went on at that time and how God is really interested in us and just wants to look after us. So you have a fantastic time today. You have a blessed week, right? And we're all looking forward to seeing each other soon. And you know, the lockdown seems to be less locking down than it was. And one day we'll all see each other personally. So have a great day. And from me and my friend here, God bless you all.